Mrs. Thompson! Mrs. Thompson! Mrs. Thompson! Feed the next row in! Park High School is a comprehensive. It has more than 900 boys and girls aged between 12 and 16. In between the chairs. In between the chair. In between the chair. It's in Stanmore, Harrow, just four miles from the famous public school. Go up on the stage and stand on a white cross, please. Three steps on a white cross, please. Park High is not a problem school, or one battling against overwhelming social deprivation. It's an ordinary suburban comprehensive, educating children of all abilities from all backgrounds. Some have severe problems, but many do not. It's popular with parents and gets good results. Right. In short, it's the sort of school most of us send our children to. We followed the school throughout the autumn term of 1991 a term in which the school strove to maintain its high standards. Why in the blazes was it then that over 20 of you failed to do it? The last person to raise his or her eyes to me left school. Would you like to leave now? You hit a boy in school? Yes, miss. What have I said time and time again about aggression? Grappled with a revolution in education and battled against limited resources and crumbling buildings. Um, the kids are great, the teachers are fabulous, but the facilities in which we have to work are really, in many cases, just an insult. These wonderful flagship schools that they're, they're spending millions of pounds on, whereas the kids here, you've seen the toilets, you've seen the science labs. Where's the fairness in that? It's pathetic. Park High also faced up to the challenges and problems that all schools must meet in the 90s. Truancy. Explain. Still want to stay school? No, I know the feeling. On the other hand, what you want and often what you have to do are very different things. They can't send the policeman to every household and take the children to school. I mean, there must be what something child wants to go to school? There must be something wrong with the child if he wants to go to school. Bullying. How many bear roughly altogether? Ten? No more than that. Was it fixed up? No. Was it arranged? Yeah. It hurt, like, in a day. If I was, like, mucked around with in a day, I, I was so depressed, I just couldn't get on. Drugs. I hoped he would be sensible enough not to. I hoped he would have the strength to walk away. I was wrong. And they're targeted on the testes and, the and testes. sex number one the penis yes you should have all got that right really, by the way. Like the penis, but is it? and as with every school there were the parents the majority at park are in agreement with the teachers last term he was awful at home as well and when i spoke to mr rumble and mr barker mm -hmm. i said well i'm his mum and mm -hmm. i could kill him i mean mm -hmm. So um, I can imagine how teachers feel when he's standing there being stroppy. But not all saw eye to eye with the staff. Do you realise how ill I am over this? And well, do you realise what you're doing to my daughter's education? That's all right, is it? That's no. fine. Deborah's doing that to her education. I'm not Deborah's doing not doing school. anything to her education. All she wants to do is come back to school. But on September the 3rd, 1991, all was quiet as the school opened its doors for the first time since the summer holidays. Its head teacher, Keith Ford's last term. He moves to a new school at Christmas. Oh, just get rid of that. Nothing worse than... Do we clean your gravel? As the new pupils arrive on their first day, the head is already dealing with the first problem of a new term, vandalism. Yeah, that was interesting. Where does that come from? It's a piece of lava. No, that did not come from there, surely. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Thank you, guys. 
it's a long term, it's 15 weeks and nights close in, it gets cold and you get bad weather. Kids have just had enough and the end of this term is when it shows. And if you have your, your big problems where you have to actually suspend or even expel in the end, it happens this term. The next hiccup is the surprising news that Lee Tilley, a new teacher from New Zealand, must sit GCSE maths if the authorities are to recognise her. She's here to teach English and drama and already has the equivalent maths qualification in New Zealand. Okay, so you want to do that part again? Uh, yeah, right. Well, I've got to ask you now, does that satisfy you? Wow. I mean, it's an insult to have to take the mask again when you've already sat the equivalent to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. I'm already a qualified and trained teacher, but... The sick thing I mean, is, she could go and teach in a private school, earn more, have better facilities, and, OK, she wouldn't get qualified status, but she could spend her whole life in the private sector, and no-one seems to give a damn about that. Then there's a call to the playground where a black car has been practicing handbrake turns among the children. It disappears only to return minutes later. This is private property and you're not allowed on it, you're trespassing. Yes, but you can't, you see, and he knows that and I'll be having a word with him about that right now. Would you please go back that way? And can I ask you to drive more carefully because there are lots of children around? It's OK. Can I see you two gentlemen, please? What a way to start the year. No, no, it starts the year. That's all it was. Well, it started the year by driving around the playground, did it? No, I didn't ask him to do that. You didn't ask him to do that, so you were kidnapped. I see. Yeah, yeah, I was kidnapped. Well, you go and kidnap yourselves up to my office. We'll start the year with a little conversation. And he's young and he's showing off. If you want to die, die somewhere else and not around here, and preferably not in uniform, right? The first day back is never an easy one. It's as difficult for the staff as it is for the new first years. Welcome. Ought to be the first word. Welcome to Park High School. Now you're here for keeps. Four years. Four years hard labour. Congratulations on joining the best school in the area, if not the best school in the country. What went through your mind when you first opened your eyes this morning? What was your reaction? Isn't it early? <laughs> Bullying takes place in every single school. You will be bullied probably on the odd occasion in your life. I found out last term that somebody in this school was actually going up to young pupils and asking them for money. Now when we found that out, the person doing it no longer came to Park High School. There's an element of acting, isn't there? It's like standing in the wings and the music pauses, and you think, right, I'm on. <laughs> very busy, very stressful, and I'd sooner be on holiday, to be quite honest. If you get into trouble with me, I will say to you, why take on a fight you cannot win? If you go out of your way to be awkward, or a nuisance, or to take us on, you'll lose. Park High educates pupils with a wide range of abilities. Deputy Head John Rumble has one class where at least three pupils are dyslexic and some others have learning difficulties. He wants to introduce a special needs support teacher into his class to help those less able pupils. Thanks very much, OK. But he knows it's a sensitive situation which could cause offence and alienation. He meets with two special needs teachers to discuss the problem. What I was thinking of is to actually making a lesson of special needs, so to speak. I think that one of the problems that we have got in this group is that there are people who don't want to be labelled, and particularly perhaps with dyslexics. We've got somebody in the school yeah. who we can't use that word with. She knows she's got problems, and she'll accept that, but she won't necessarily accept the word dyslexic. So maybe it's worth looking at labels there. What I thought is that I would you know, say, take my glasses off, act the fool a bit, um, bump into the desk or something, and say to them, well, you can see what my need is, can't mm -hmm. you? Um, let them know that we all have special needs in that way. Why women find it more difficult to back cars, for instance. It's a fact. Uh, it's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. It's a fact. It's a It's a spatial awareness is different, isn't it? Yes. I believe so. Yes, I believe so. Um, <clears throat> however, I may run into difficulties. I think you ought to leave that one out altogether. Leave that one. Looking at um, the sort of girls that are in that group, I think she'd leave that out. Oh, I see. 
the school is fortunate. Most pupils are well behaved and discipline is tight. But in any school of nearly a thousand children, there are incidents to deal with daily. Now, I don't mean sitting down there, I mean into school. Am I user? A boy has been caught with a rude picture. I am disgusted and appalled at you, young man. What would your mother think if she saw something like that? Look at me when I'm talking to you. What would she think? I think she would be very, very upset indeed. We do not bring this sort of thing into school. Do you understand? Right, you see me at 3.25, young man. I'll have that, thank you. 3.25 on the dot. Out. Is there anywhere in this school or around this school that you can smoke and not get caught? Yes. You reckon so? All right, I accept your challenge. The next time I catch you smoking, I'll expel you. I'll say my question again. Do you seriously think there is somewhere in this school that you could smoke and not get caught? Because I'm telling you there's not. But if you think there is, by all means, take me on. Great, I accept. Is that the challenge you want? Pardon? Pardon? Yes. Pardon? Yes, sir. Thank you. But 14-year-old Samantha is a pupil different from most. She's causing persistent problems. She's just disrupted another lesson. She says to me, how dare you? How dare you be so rude? And I didn't even say nothing to her, so I said to her, I wasn't even talking to you, and then it started arguing. Why is it always you who's got to have the final word? Why have you got to put your opinion in when actually you keep your own opinion to yourself? Why have you got to prove a point? Why? Oh, I did let her. I was just left there to carry on shouting at me, and I didn't say nothing. Very nice of you, having set her off shouting at you. What happens if I get involved? Get in more trouble. Yeah, but it's sort of getting near the end of the line trouble, isn't it? Yeah. Are you going to survive? Yeah. Good. Off you go. Mr. Dedridge is in with me this afternoon. Mr. Dedridge is one of our special needs teachers. We all have special needs. Mr. Dedridge has special needs. My special need, particularly, is fairly obvious, I suppose. What's one of my special needs? Any ideas? <laughs> Well, look, <clears throat> let's put it... Oh, my God, where have they gone? Where are they? Where are they? Just, uh, thank you. Doesn't take long, does it, with a little bit of help? And you keep this kid very warm. The class is given some sheets on special needs to discuss. Yeah. What kind of needs do you have? Yes. Right, come on, let's try and move on. We're a bit slow at the moment. But some of the class do seem alarmed at being labelled. Um, what do you call it? What needs do my um, other people have? It's not everyone that's really going to have the needs. No, Everybody has a normal. need of some sort. Not like a special no, need. No, I'm normal. I'm not, right. There's nothing wrong with me. Think of it this like, way. The average person's not going to have special needs. No. What is the word? What is it the word is? Spell it out. The point is, yeah. All right, let's see your season. We've got needs, but they're not trap. special. Oh, what's wrong with person? the word special? Special means good. It's not special for people who like, are really you... ill, like people who've got AIDS, they need special needs. If I, say, if I said to you, you're a special person, would you get upset and say, oh, that's, how dare you say I'm a special yeah. person? Yeah, because I'm not Like, what's wrong with being a special person? We're not special. We're not special. What's that? Adult. Ad adult. Adult. Same. Same. Adult. Go on, go on, you're getting there. So your needs aren't important? Uh, if, if, I, if I could have something I want, you know, I could live without it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But if we can help you with your needs, isn't that a good thing? Yeah, but that's not the issue. The issue is whether <laughs> the needs are special or not. Adol. Adol. Le. Go on. Adolescence. Adolescence. You're there. The two teachers haven't been given an easy ride. Grades <laughs> aren't always needed in jobs. Don't you think it's a good thing to be able to spell, to use that example? The spelling safe. But in the end, the girls are won over. Let's invent a word. Let's call it. Um... Yeah, but that ain't, that's not true. What about different names? Special needs. What about different names? Yeah, but it's. Should we cross it out? Yeah. If yeah, you that's how about it. Yeah. All right. I solved that one. Right, get on to B. The idea that there might be children in, in every classroom. In, in every school with special needs of some sort is very threatening because they don't want to think, well, wait a minute, I've got special needs, I, I have needs, I might need help. They, they, they find that very threatening because it's associated with 
negative things, weakness, disability. I have here the result of the pests list. You know, the, the little survey that many of you help with by sending in your marks out of ten. Uh, there's a pretty unique situation. We've done this now three times, I think, and this time someone has won it with more than double the points of the next person. <laughs> Didn't she do well? Don't bother talking, just try shutting up. The pest list is compiled after staff rate pupils for disruption. It was introduced by the head after some teachers complained they weren't getting enough support in dealing with problems in the classroom. Anthony, switch on. I will be seeing the, the top ten for a personal interview. In the entire school, that is years 11, 10, 9 and 8, 927 pupils. Would you like to guess where you came in this list? Sixth. Now, in half a term, you have managed to get to sixth place in the list of nuisances. I cannot believe. Well, have you tried to improve? Sometimes. Sometimes is going to change into all times, because I am giving you a warning, young man. Yes. And not many first years make it this far. The warning is, if you appear on this list again, and you come back into this room, your stay with us is going to be a very short one indeed. Where do you think you came? Fifth. But there's no promotion from this league. The only promotion is outwards. And I wonder if that's what you want. I don't know. Perhaps sometimes I think you do. What would you hope to, to get out of school? Not a lot, really. My, my, I mean, no one that I know really who's, like, left school used any of their education anyway. So I don't know why I should need it. When you're being a nuisance, why do you do it? Because it's a love. So you find it amusing? I'm at the time. But don't you get fed up with being told off? Yeah. Just a minute, take that off. Natasha's father did not attend parents' evening. Bye. Do you think those sort of things are important or not, really? Uh, it's important to the parents who feel for their children and want them to have the best out of education, then they should go. And would you count yourself as one of those parents? I wouldn't, no. I wouldn't. There's going to be a fairly sort of final decision to make. That will be up to you, but it'll affect your life and I don't really want to have to do it. Do you think you'll ever look back when you're older and regret that you didn't do more with your education? Yeah, I think I will. What do, you, what do you think you'll regret? Not learning anything. The head is a supporter of caning. I'll be blunt, four years ago, when these kids were coming in, I'd have threatened to hit them. Um, as, a, as a first line of proving that you are serious and so you're not playing games. Um, I believe that had an impact. It worked. And there are some occasions now that go on and on and dig into deeper and deeper trouble that could be sorted out, I'm afraid, with a good old-fashioned hiding. You know you told me that you were going to improve. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Well, I don't know whether to congratulate you on dropping to eighth or kill you for being in the top ten. Which? I don't know. <laughs> Better than last year. Mark's mum is a supporter of caning. The children know today. What's going to happen to them? They'll get a detention. There's nothing more embarrassing than being caned in front of everybody. And that's why I feel boys like Mark do need corporal punishment. They do need the cane. Oh, caning, God, that went out uh, oh, centuries ago. <laughs> Not that long ago, Mark. <laughs> so? I think it would. I think it would uh, stop you. I don't think it would, you know, because... Would, because you can't bear pain. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mum. You know. <laughs> so why, then? Why? Can't you think of one reason? Well, we'll just stand there until you can think of it. What did you say again? I didn't think you actually understood what I said. I suppose I've caned many pupils in my time. 
And I don't think that, you know, those, those very, very same pupils, whenever they've come back to school, have always been, you know, greeted me. There's been no resentment because they always felt that it was fair cop. To answer your question, is that what you want? Well, I'm gonna, could, if I push you... I if mean, you pushed me... I mean, yes or no for the cane, now? No. No, I'd say no. Better with that. I never thought that I would say that, but I think it's better with that. Sam, do not argue, or you'll be here any even longer. Thank you. Samantha has topped the pest list. Her interview with the head will be crucial. It will determine if she has a future at Park. The person who came second got 42 total. The person who came top got 86. I think you've guessed by now who the person is who came top. What are we going to do? This isn't a joke. It's very, very serious. Come on, it isn't time just to sort of go into a little duck dream. Why is it happening? Well, you're there at the time and I'm not. Bad. While Bad Sam is failing to grasp the importance of this interview, normal school life for the other 926 pupils at Park High School I've continues. I go straight. Ah, come on. You go from lesson to lesson, reeling with shock and horror that people are telling you off because you don't understand why. No. I know why when they tell me off, isn't it? Yeah, I don't chat when she says, when the teacher is saying, you've got like, no chatting, and I don't chat in it. So you do as you're told? No, not all the time. That's much better. This is serious, isn't that right? It may seem like a game, it's not. So how do you get on the good side of a teacher? I don't know. Well, you see other people doing it, obviously. No. No one gets on the good side of teachers. I said I don't see other people doing it except for when they go, yes, they have no staff feedback school, sir. Which you don't agree with? No. Why? Not at all. You should say your piece, isn't it? Always. No, not always, but sometimes. But you have in the past said things and got yourself into trouble. Yeah, that's because I can't control myself sometimes. You can't control yourself. Sometimes. That's what I'm trying to get to the bottom of. What is it about a certain time that stops you controlling when yourself? When people get too feisty, isn't it? If this is a precursor of what's going to happen inside, I'm going to lock you in there now. Get that clear. How do I protect the teachers of this school? Can I make you behave? No. I can't? No. It's impossible? Yes. Right. Take your blazers off. Gosh, not you lot. You keep quiet. Sit down. Are you working? Yeah. Are you doing homework? No. Why not? Because I can't do it. Why? No one to talk to? No, because, because, because my mum doesn't know how to help me because she's just as thick. Thick? Yeah. So you're thick? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Have you always been thick? Yes. You were born thick? Yes. I see. When did you first become convinced of that? I don't know. <sighs> this is sad. This is sad. As it went on, I got more and more disturbed about how disturbed she was. Um, I, I don't think I really got through to her because I think she really wants to be accepted and liked but really hasn't got a clue how to do it. The interview has lasted three quarters of an hour. Having issued his final warning, he escorts Sam to her next lesson. Her final chance. At the end of the lesson, the teacher pours away a cup of coffee she's not had time to drink. Someone has put a number of needles in it. I've been here four years in a term, and I've... And it's, I've never had an incident like that before. Um, usually, the pupils are polite to staff. Ford must find out who is responsible. He'll call the class together to face a questionnaire drawn up that morning. Samantha is absent from school. In between it being brought in here and left in here, and the end of the lesson, some pins were dropped into that coffee. If that member of staff had had time to drink that coffee, she could now be dead, or at least she would certainly be in hospital. And you are here today so that I can discover who put the pins into the coffee. Put your hands on your head. Put your hands on your head. 
I'm just proving a point. If I wish to bully you, I can bully you. This is a very simple little way of bullying you. Shall I make you stand up on the stools, bend over and touch your toes, sit on the floor? If I was here to get you or be nasty, I could spend my whole life bullying you. I don't think you notice too much of that going on in the school. Take your hands down. The questionnaire, which asks detailed questions about the whole incident and has to be individually signed, is handed out. I honestly suggest you write the truth, or it could be the last thing you write at this school. As it is on the when the forms have been filled in, the head takes each girl in turn next door to be interviewed. Some of the girls are reluctant to talk. I don't want to have to do nasty things to any more people than is necessary. I really honestly don't. Do you know anything about this? No. Liar. The girls wait nervously for their turn. Next door, the interviews continue. It isn't about us and them. How many times can I say that? Do you honestly think I come in every day to harm you? Honestly, is that what you think? It's incredible. When you're an adult, you'll think back on this and you'll wonder what the devil you were doing. Most of the girls in the end say what they know. All I know is that I heard someone say someone's put pins in the coffee. Right. And I saw Sam spit in it. You saw Samantha spit into the coffee? Yeah. What will your mum say if you're expelled? Well, I've been expelled before and, uh, I don't know. This, uh, this is my last chance. This is going to have to, I've been to three schools now. Okay, um, but, but, um, if I don't get expelled and I leave the school, then I can go to another school, but if I get expelled, then I have to go to one of them spastic schools, you know. Not for total, uh, you know, mashed up children. <laughs> You know what's coming, don't you? Yes. Do you want to say anything? Put the pins in our coffee. No, I'm not talking about pins. Oh. Did you spit in the coffee, isn't it? Huh? Did you spit in the coffee? No, I was only mucking about and it landed on your desk. You spat in the coffee. Look, people oh. saw you do it. No, it didn't. It didn't go in the coffee. Well, anyway, it's the end of the line, right? So, do you want to read this first? Huh? Can I stick it down then? Yeah. Right. Take it home. If your mum does want to talk to me, I'll be in on Monday. She can talk to me then. Right. Bye. The head sees Sam's tutor. Let's just let it slip. Well, it's not that. It's just that she was OK 60% of the time. Mm. And in fact, she's quite very pleasant, nice to get on with. Her. But. If you were teaching her in one of those 40%, oh, you had no chance. I know. It's a defeat. I say I did everything I could, and then personally you feel, what a shame you couldn't do something more. Are you still going to sit there, pull people's hair, and generally play about? Oh, I could cry at you lot sometimes. And I won't accept it. You know I won't accept it, so why do you do it? There will be a reply in my hands tomorrow morning, or you will suffer the consequences. Go. We are not going until you listen, so you might as well listen. Anna! Just be quiet. For a free information handbook for parents of secondary school children, please write to Park High, Box 33, London, SE1, 9LT. That's Park High, Box 33, London, SE1, 9LT. Five to nine, and the last few of Park High's pupils wend their way to school. The medical room already has its first casualty. Not How's it not late? That's the first time ever, David. What's the matter? What's wrong? Oh, I just know. I've been sick in the toilet. Park High School is a suburban comprehensive in Harrow. It educates almost a thousand children. You were playing. 
Well, you deserve to hurt your thumb because you know our attitude on play fighting. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm surprised at you. I think I'll change my report now just for you what a brilliant person you are, how you've improved an attitude, etc., etc. Play fighting. It's a popular and successful school, the sort of school many of our children attend. For those who have missed the nine o'clock deadline, their excuses are destined for the late book. As for Max's excuse, it's all down to his bag. I had to have a crap as well, so it's like... <laughs> the head sees Ian about his excuse for being late. It says your reason for being late is that you rescued a cat from a tree. Now, if that is the case, I want to investigate that, because if that happened, I want to congratulate you, because I like cats. He sees David. His reason is also a cat. If their excuse is reasonable, we don't punish them. If it's not reasonable, we punish them. So you think it's a joke. Put cat up a tree. I like cats. Why did you put a cat up a tree? Because mm, of what Ian and Chris broke before. Because of what Ian and Chris broke behind. So your cat sometimes follow you, follows you and sometimes he goes up a tree, but he didn't this morning. No, but then the lady said I couldn't put down late. I couldn't think of anything to write and had to go to my lesson. So you lied? Yes. It's bubbling. I was making a push it. I can't get around there, so you'll have to pull it with the mic. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Park High School is preparing for the school play, and the set won't budge. There's just four weeks before the first night of Pygmalion. It wasn't fair for a pig to live in, and I had to pay four and six a week. Oh! <laughs> the costumes are coming on slowly. That's a cardigan. Awful. Put that away now. It's like a cardigan. Yeah, it's like from the 60s. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Do us a twirl. I like the ankle socks, those really set it off, Melissa. And the set still won't budge. This is an easier way to do this. Sasha! Oh, oh. <laughs> a key performer has just dropped out. Play director Sharon Rhodes is looking for a Mr. Doolittle. Do you fancy a party with Sorry? Technology teacher Pete Drury, working within a budget of £200, is in the school's cellar searching for scenery and props. So who used to play for the whole school? Yes, it's a public performance, a school play. Amazing. That school desk's from about the year 1950, I think. Still no takers for Doolittle. Head of Humanities Bernard Bevin Davis was previously an excellent mother goose. Well, go on, someone's dropped out of the time. How long have we got? Till November. You'd be absolutely fantastic. Oh, shut up. To do this. Shut up. Could that be an ancient phonograph? Now, that could be useful. What do you think? Should I struggle a bit harder? Yeah. Oh, go on. Right, done. Got himself. Done. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll do it. Oh, great! Every year I'm exactly the same. I find it a very... A very emotional experience because I get so involved with having to pull all the bits together, knowing that I'm never going to get a professional performance because it's a school. Have any of your sets ever fallen down? Uh, no, but they move a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Ford is a head teacher who likes to be seen around. Despite leaving at the end of this term, he still tours the school daily. Hey, 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 get rid of that. He has a reputation for strictness. The last person to raise his or her eyes to me left school. Would you like to leave now? Pardon? No. Pardon? No. Who are you speaking to? Sir. Right, this whole area will be cleared. Get out. All of you, get out. Some of you haven't got any brain. Get out. That is against the law. And how dare you do it just outside the school? How dare you respond when I'm giving you an obvious message in there that you are breaking school rules with anything other than embarrassment that you're in the wrong? Because I'm in the right, you're in the wrong. This recorded message is going to turn into a recorded detention. Would you describe yourself as a disciplinarian? Yes. I've been called worse. Yes, yes I would, and I'm not ashamed of that. Yes, I am. 
Hey, hey, if you let one more door slam in my face, I'll slam you. You stop throwing your weight around at this place, little boy. You'll find you haven't got very much to throw. Do you understand? Okay. There's got to be a nasty person somewhere around the place. When you get into this job, you don't like losing. In fact, you can't afford to lose. Because if you lose a battle, you can lose the war. Ford is particularly strict about uniform. It's such a nice, straightforward, simple little thing to fight a battle on. It's not like a, a massive personal problem. It's a child saying, I know that rule exists, but I'm going to break it and see what happens. You aren't allowed to wear that pullover to school. Now, is that clear? Yes. What are you wearing? Gloves. Why? Socks. Why? When? Thank you. I mean, I feel strongly enough about uniform to say I wouldn't work in a school that didn't have school uniform. You'll be back in uniform tomorrow, and if I see those again, you'll be in serious trouble. Do you understand? Nice try, didn't work. Go away. I'm leaving this school in two weeks and four days. If I see you around my school again with your shirt hanging out, you'll leave with me. Do you understand? Sure. Go, get out. It can destroy a weekend. I can actually see someone going off down the road having pulled their shirt out, and it's too far for me to catch them. I don't want to run after them. And I can actually go home seething with anger. It's, it's pathetic. Um, Why then? I don't know. I think 20 years of, of winning battles. I'll do myself what I want to do. Get out. I wonder where the devil my slippers are. 20 days to Pygmalion's curtain up and a rehearsal with the three main characters. Now, you've got to... Look, Neil, you can't wait for her to come in. You've got I to I don't know where on. we were. Sorry, I didn't know where we are. Can we you cue it again, please? Sorry. Progress so far is a little now. slow. You're making... You, you're, you're brushing the whole thing off. It's been purgatory. It's a word you could spit out. Last year was, was a nightmare. What was the production? We did Greece last year. Good or bad? <sighs> it was a moderate success. It was a nightmare. Oh, that's why I've used my drama group this year. I decided it was such a hell hell last year. And I wasn't going to have such difficulty. No, 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 no. Hands on the chair. Anger, absolutely visible. Look up, look up, and look directly to that door as if you wanted to pelt something at him. <laughs> I actually right. enjoy directing. I actually get a tremendous lift out of seeing somebody making a role live. Spit hate in that face. Come on. <laughs> oh, dear. Can I do it again? 15-year-old Anna has the lead role of Eliza Doolittle. Tell me the words you think he used and... Um... I hate you! How dare you use me in such a way? Say it! I think about learning my lines a lot because that's something which worries me quite a bit because I've got a lot to learn. But, um... I'm not really worried about everyone coming to see it. I mean, when it starts, I think I'll feel very proud and, and happy, and I know, she, I know she's really up together on that first section, so that will be just fine. But it will be if she starts to stumble around with some words. Uh, I don't know how I'll begin to <laughs> feel then. I probably wish I wasn't there, I should think. Now, I've got to see some reaction. You've got to see! A quiet word. Um, Rumours are circulating in Park that some pupils are taking drugs. We're concerned because I did hear a rumour that there had been the possibility of some gas? Mm, butane, butane gas. gas sniffing actually at school. Now if that was to be the case and I don't want to investigate it, you realise I'd have to expel you, do you? Well, I think you need to think about not only what you're doing in school, but what you're doing outside school as well. And I appeal to you to show a bit of common sense in the way you run your life. Because it may seem to you you're old enough to make decisions for yourself, but there are certain decisions that no one is old enough to make. Killing yourselves early, we're not going to let you do. I'm sorry, anyone who says there are no drugs anywhere is wrong. And we'll fight it like mad and, and uh, they won't bring stuff to school. But out there, sometimes, They've got access to it on buses, on the way home, on Saturdays. Um, they can get it if they want it. What we are saying is, don't make a fool of yourself. Because whatever you think you're doing is secret, it's not. It gets out, and if we hear any more such rumours, I will not hesitate 
to involve the police. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Stop it. Go back to your lesson. No need to talk about this. So it's true? It's true. You can tell, can't you? Well, we've had a couple that have got violent. Park has a policy of tackling issues such as alcohol and drugs head on. The police are often invited in, for example today, as part of a video being made by pupils. But don't you sometimes get uh, false reports like they mistake it for cannabis plant? Yes, yes, that would happen. Tomatoes look a little bit like yeah. cannabis. We would check it out first. Because don't forget, if the neighbours can see it... Um, At a governor's meeting, the head reports the suspension of 15-year-old David found with drugs at school. The police were called in. A pupil had a small amount of cannabis which he was showing round to people in his excitement. He was intercepted. It was taken. The police were called. The boy was arrested. But nevertheless, when, when people ask me about drugs at Park High, and I tell them there's absolutely no question of there being a, a problem. I, I, presumably, I'm, I'm speaking the truth. No. No, there is a problem in every single school in this country with drugs. Well, I mean... Oh, I mean, I mean yes, but I mean... I can, tell you, I can tell you ten places in Harrow where you could buy cannabis um, with considerable ease. When the policeman came come to take me down the station, he started asking me all these questions, where I got it from, and all that sort of stuff. And I just, like, just said, I'm not saying. And then when I got down to the police station, they just searched my bag and looked through my books and just see if there was anything else. Uh, put me in a cell and left me there until my mum come. They had found me at work to say that David had been arrested and he was at the police station. And I was devastated. I'd never even seen drugs only on the television or in the newspaper. I'd never actually seen it for real. And here I was being confronted with drugs with my own son. Do you think drugs are dangerous? Uh, depends. I mean, what? I was arrested with cannabis and that's, as far as the law's concerned, it's, it's illegal, but it's not addictive. If you're taking that, then you've just got to be careful on what else you go on to, such as trips and ease and all that. You've just got to be careful not to go on to them. Was this the edge of the precipice? What was this going to lead on to? Were we going to go on to the hard drugs? Was he sniffing anything? I, I just didn't know. Everything went through my head. Maybe if I was offered solvents before I was arrested, then I would have probably said yes. What do you think the difference is between you and a pupil who will say no to everything? Since you've got a responsibility just to turn around and say, nah, and walk away. Would well, you think you can say that now? I can now, but I couldn't before. I hoped it wouldn't be my child's life. I hoped he would be sensible enough not to. I hoped he would have the strength to walk away. I was wrong. The head announced David's suspension in assembly as a warning. After I did the assembly and announced to the school what had happened, without naming the child, stressing how important and dangerous it was and everything else, a few parents rang and said, oh, you've got a drug problem in your school. And they sort of questioned whether they wanted their child to come here this year. But to me, I mean, if you hide it and pretend it's not there, you're more likely to encourage it, because it will take place then. I can't fault Park High at all. I cannot fault the teaching staff. They have been so supportive right the way through. Ten days to go on one of the play's final rehearsals. I can't hear you. Your diction's appalling. The rain was so sudden, nobody was prepared. And everybody had to... Yeah, really about the rain being sudden, you know? <laughs> look, look at the rain. Look at it's raining. Shall I start again? No, no. Oh, lost my place. The rain was so sudden. Come on, come on, come on. What business is? Oh, God. What business? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? It's got sore throat. <laughs> what? 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 Every year, I say to the head, I'm not going to do another one. 
And every year I sit, when I go in and say um, what I'm doing this year, he says, I thought you were never going to do another one. The cast are supposed to know their lines. Don't let me have the book. <laughs> At, the end of six At the end of six months, you should go to the Buckingham Palace. In a carriage. In a carriage. The king finds if out the king finds out that you are not a lady, <laughs> you'll be taken. You'll be taken away by the police, by the, by the police to the Tower of London, <laughs> and <laughs> your head cut off. Bernard, who took the part of Mr. Doolittle under duress and at the last minute, is also a long way off being word perfect. Where's my book? Can't the I just hold it? No script. Oh, let me just no script. <laughs> you were not enough. joking. No. No script. Page 49. Excuse me, question here. Is that your Have you ever met a man with Yes, very frequently. If you wait a minute, I'll tell you. I'm wanting to tell you. I'm willing. I want my daughter. Should they know their lines better? Yes. They shouldn't. <laughs> well, I should know flaming lines properly, yes. I mean, it's just, uh, there's no excuse for that. Really, no excuse for that. Get your scripts out and. <sighs> I'm going upstairs for the minutes. Things don't improve. three rehearsals to go. There's tomorrow, there's Sunday, and there's Monday. And if they don't know the lines, you can forget the rest. Three days to go, and in a desperate attempt to get things right, rehearsals are now continuing in class time. No, shut up! It's hard enough without your noise! My nightmare is that things go wrong, because I, I want it to be as professional as it is possible for an amateur production to be. I'd be very upset, indeed, if it is so awful that I can't show my face in the staff room the following morning. You're not making it any easier! Park High says in its publicity brochure, we are a good school, our buildings are not. It's a problem faced by hundreds of schools right across the country. Park High is over 50 years old. Its paint cracks, its window frames buckle, causing the glass to shatter, its walls and ceilings crumble. The cost of repair is enormous, money the school has just not got. I mean, really, the buildings in this school and in many schools around are just an insult to the staff and the pupils that have to work in them. Does it matter? It matters a lot. I mean, you just got to go out into any sort of progressive industry or commercial environment and you'll see what a premium they put on the quality of the environment. They know that it affects the quality of the work that goes on. So it matters a lot. This school was last painted 12 or 13 years ago, I understand. You'll notice it's even actually slightly dark in here. The windows haven't been cleaned for two years because the authority um, stopped the contract to save money. These huts were built in the 1940s with a life expectancy of something like 20 years. Cold in winter, hot in summer, the huts that have not already collapsed are still in daily use. Wildlife has taken over the roofs. They had maggots in there. One of the teachers was in there one day and suddenly felt things dropping into her hair. And there were maggots falling through holes in the ceiling. But they, they've lasted a long while. I mean. But would you live in something like that? Well, these are the toilets. The the boys' toilets, um, they are 51 years old, they leak, and they usually don't smell that bad, except the drains block up quite regularly, 
Um, when I first came here, someone set fire to one of the toilet paper holders and the caretaker put the fire out, which is probably the worst thing he's ever done. He should have actually fanned the flames, I think. The science labs are among the worst in Harrow. A borough-wide improvement programme ran out of money before it reached Park. Running repairs are simply not enough to raise standards. These facilities are out of date and potentially dangerous. I mean, this is a very not lovely piece of wood. Um, it actually moves from side to side. Now, when you consider that gas is actually coming up into there, I somehow don't think that this should pivot on itself. I mean, it strikes me as being crazy. The kids are great. The department's great. The teachers are fabulous. But the facilities in which we have to work are really, in many cases, just an insult. Under LMS, the local management of schools, Park is now largely responsible for its own budget. But the sort of money needed to improve the buildings is way beyond the school. Do we pay out all the school's money to decorate this corridor? Or do we buy books? Or do we heat the place? Or do we employ a teacher? Or should we sack two teachers and paint this corridor? These wonderful flagship schools that they're, they're spending millions of pounds on, whereas the kids here, you've seen the toilets, you've seen the science labs. Where's the fairness in that? The first night of Pygmalion has arrived. We have got 45 minutes. Listen, so you must be finished by 7. Um, you feel like a condom. <laughs> uh, before we finally let the curtains go, we just have a quick look round, and then you're OK with me. And it's thumbs up on the curtain. If they enjoy it on the night, I'll be very happy. I won't watch it on the nights. I pay something down outside. I, I, I can't watch it. As the audience file in, Sharon, to the cast's surprise, opts for some last-minute relaxation techniques. I want you to imagine that you're sitting on a riverside. It's a lovely day, and you're concentrating on the sound of the water. And as you step onto the stile, you're feeling ready to start, ready to begin and face the world. Ready for anything. After weeks of hard work, the show is finally underway. Lights, lights. Very well, I'll go, I'll go. Out front, things are going smoothly, but backstage, Bernard's in trouble. Look here, Molly, let's think about the thing. And if you'll be so good, you'll not see every one in the same place and to remember. Bernard's moment of truth. Professor Higgs. Here, good morning. Sit down. Morning, Governor. I've come to see you about very serious mouth. Brought up in Hounslow. Mother Welsh, I should think. What do you want to, little? This is a plant. Looks sort of money by threats, isn't it? No, Governor. Bernard remembers his lines. How else could you possibly know that she's here? But only just. Don't take a man up like that, Governor. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Bernard's done well, but then a moment of madness. He feels he's forgotten a line and returns to deliver it. The line is from a completely different part of the play. And what should I want money for? Put in the church plate, I suppose. The cast on stage are left speechless. I've thrown them completely. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Your fault. 
Um, it's not me. It's not for me to dispense blame at times like this. <laughs> Apart from Bernard's aberration, things are going well. Are you walking across the park, Miss Bull? Oh, it's right. Walk! No! Lucky like it! I'm going home in a taxi! Brilliant. The interval. They're halfway there. Oh, I said art. Oh, that's it. said art. Neil comes running in here and goes, I said art. Did it come out like that? Special needs teacher Steve Dedridge has been worried about that beard all week. Last night at home it stayed on for two hours. Tonight it lasts less than two minutes. I help him to pretend. Of course I make him pay through the nose. I make him all pay. <laughs> I, I can play the man. Anyway, On the night, Pygmalion by Park High is a storming success. So, the creature's nervous after all. Oh! No! Oh, oh, Hold in! You bat! How dare you show temper to me! Oh. Sit down and be quiet! Not even the school bell can stop them. Hi, George. I like you like this. Freddy. Finally, it's all Mary over. Freddy. And Sharon's pleased. I want these stories to see it all over. I, I just think it's just a whole part of her life now. It's sort of it's there, it's on record. Something she'll remember always. I just wanted to say thank you. I know I've been horrible the last few days. No, no, no. no. So it's worth the effort. Oh, of course it is. The school is a better place for it. Their lives are a better place for it. Our relationships are better for it. You know, I couldn't. Any school that doesn't even begin to do something like that, have a go, is not worth being in. I have to ask you now will you be doing it again next year? <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> If I see you breaking the law again, I'll call the police and have you arrested. So undo your buttons and shout We'll be paying another visit to Park High at the same time next week. Stand there! You're not a statue! You're a plonker. What are you? <laughs> Look, can you just be quiet? And you've done nothing. Absolutely nothing. High School is a mixed comprehensive educating almost a thousand children in Harrow. It has a good reputation locally and is oversubscribed. I am sitting in a history test where I know none of the answers. How would you help me cheat? I'd write the answers on my thighs and raise my skirt slowly for you to see them. <laughs> Park High is an ordinary suburban school, the sort of school many of our children go to. We followed the school throughout the autumn term last year. A slightly risque version of Blind Date is being held to raise money for a new minibus. If you could choose to be any character in a pantomime, which character would you be? I'd be the cat in Dick Whittington and you can be Dick and rub me throughout the performance. <laughs> the head, Keith Ford, is dealing with Max, whose prank has hurt a girl. I know that seemed funny. <laughs> Max, you did it. I was watching you. Yeah. I actually saw you do it. She was about to sit down. You pulled the chair away. It is probably the most ridiculous trick anyone can play. Know what I've done. But it happened, didn't it, Max? Yes, sir. Contestant number three. <laughs>
Oh, no kiss for that one. Survive, Max, please. Off you go. Sorry, sir. Words again. Words. Nothing to me. It happened don't, to her. Don't give me detention, sir. I don't want to give you a detention, Max. No, I have no pleasure in giving you a detention. I'm going to point you. I'll probably just kick you in the head or something like that. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Bye, bye, Max. There's one minute to go before break ends, and I want to buy a cream bun. How would you help me get to the front of the queue? Who needs a cream bun when I'm around, and you can lick the cream off me any time? <laughs> And you chose contestant number one. Here she is. Lunchtime, and as these first years play happily outside, inside a boy has been injured. At first, he claimed it was an accident. He was in that he was hit by a door. He's got his eyes completely swollen. He can, can't open his eye. There's bruising there and bumps around his head. I went down... Versatile door. Yes, mm. very versatile. And he was very, very reticent. I mean, he was still saying it's a door, but I got out of it, him that it was Damien. He said what happened was that Damien thought that John had called him a nigger. Ford sets out to find those involved. As many as a dozen pupils saw the assault. This boy took part, but was not the main attacker. What's going on? I tried that. He was being racist. He called me a nigger. Started talking about me. Right. I've got to look into this, because he's damaged. Uh, right? We uh, could, in fact, have a, a problem on our hands. Um, so as far as you're concerned, this is it's just like kind of the blue. So why did you push him? Huh? So why did you push him? Because he'd be talking about my parents. How do you know? That's what I mean, I don't really know. So why did he push him? I don't know. It's just what if I say, I've heard that you've been calling my mum all sorts of names? Thump. Would that be right? No, it would be right. No, so don't do it. Right, right. that's quite simple. Next, the head sees the victim. It wasn't, wasn't arranged, but I, I knew that... <coughs> he was looking for me. One question, John. This is... Hand, foot. Hello. Hand, foot. Right. And is what has been said true? But, but why he was angry? No, it's not true. Right. Okay, I'll say I'll speak to you when you, when you come back. I said, all right, to send him home now. Yes, Mum contacts please us. Please. Daniel, Can you buying some food? Go on then, hurry up. Daniel is at the centre of this punch up. It is he who has told the attackers of the alleged racist comments. And what was he saying? Well, he was saying he was on taking the mickey out of black people. So in general? Yeah. Like what sort of thing? Yeah. I, I like Harry, but I don't, because I don't like Harry that much because there's too many coons down here, things like that. He didn't mention Damien's name or...? Well, he only mentioned Damien's name once, so he said he could beat him up. Yeah. When did you tell him that? I told him Saturday. On Saturday? Yeah. I said, don't tell him, John, I told you. Why did you feel the need to tell Damien? Because it's a bit weird that you're, um... Do you know what it's caused now, do you? Yeah, I hope. Do you know what's going to happen? Yeah. Well, we can imagine the sort of things that are going to happen. I've got a severely injured boy in the medical room. Why did you have to get involved? Oh, it's like Damien's friend, he would have done the same for me, though. Would he? Yeah. What, cause him to get suspended? That's what friends do, is it? No. Yeah, well, you've made a blunder there, Daniel. A blunder. Yeah, you know what the question is. Damien turns up at the head's door. His mother doesn't want him identified. Just come in. In the medical room is a fairly badly damaged person. Damien is asked to stay at home for one day. Calm is restored, but the who said what allegations continue. It's the reason being that John, John Williams had said that she was overweight and had made rude remarks about her mother. So that's why Damien was up there. Started on a bus late on Friday night when three of our pupils seemingly were drunk and they were all boasting and talking. The problem is, of course, it, it as usual, leads to problems in school. And we pick up the pieces. And this could go down as a school fight, but it had its, its roots in central Harrow at 10 o'clock on a Friday night. 
John Rumble has been a teacher for 35 years. He prides himself on his punctuality, hard work and attention to detail. Oh, my goodness. Last term, would you believe you were reading this? Look up at one scene. For the first time in his career, his judgment has been called seriously into question. What that's really saying is... You're incompetent. You can't judge. Rumble's anger is over the English GCSE. It no longer has a formal exam like this. It consists instead of 100% coursework. Right. You may get cracking on that now, please. Teachers mark their own pupils' folders and give an estimated grade. These folders are then cross-checked by other English teachers at Park, and some, as an example of the marking, are sent to an external exam moderator. Names on, please. It's usual for the odd grade to be changed by the moderator, but in the summer of 91, 80 Park High pupils are marked down. Nearly all of the 31 children in John Rumble's class have lost out. In the particular class that I was teaching, I think that there are only four of them who have not been downgraded. What's your reaction to that, then? Well, pretty horrified, as you can imagine, when the literature results they have agreed with every one of the grades that I've given but one. And that one, they marked up. Nothing like this has ever happened at Park High before. The school's exam marking record is a good one. But how can I be wrong in 10% of my marking for every pupil? I've suddenly become senile this year. But why hasn't it happened in English literature? Some staff are linking the exam board's remark to a decision by Peter Devine, the head of the English department, not to attend a meeting where schools and the exam board standardise marking. Park refused to let Devine go as his supply cover and travel expenses would not be paid for. I suppose a really cynical person would say, are you having your knuckles wrapped because you didn't go to that meeting? No, I, I, of course, I can't believe a thing like that. It's, as a professional person, I can't. The bit that annoys me is that in this report back on the English, which is one they've downgraded, um, there's a paragraph that says the centre's refusal to attend the agreement trial caused some concern. And quite frankly, it sounds to me like they're punishing us for not going to their meeting. This is a rare sight. Patrick Looney is 15, does not like school, and only sporadically comes to Park High. Today is the first day that he has arrived at school for, I think, the last two weeks. He has not appeared at all. He does not care. He doesn't care about sanctions. He came in this morning and said, you've seen me, miss. Can I go home now? Patrick has forgotten his judo kit. You're not going to have people running around all your life reminding you about things, Patrick, that are important to you. I mean, this is something you're good at, and you can't even remember, can you? Hey. And, um, look on, I'll off that with this. Patrick's yearhead Eileen Whitaker is making a determined bid to salvage something of his education. The Year 11 project in Harrow caters for disaffected school children. Mrs. Whitaker and the school's education social worker meet the project organisers. Patrick's social skills are exceptionally poor, we feel. Um, he finds a great deal of difficulty with most of his peers. In the main, his behaviour is very aggressive towards other pupils and sometimes towards staff. What is it about school you don't like? Well, the atmosphere and everything. Sort of, like, do this, do that. Sort of, I'd rather be, uh, if I could do anything, I'd rather be out at work. What about maths? I hate that. Yeah? Do you... Do you not think you're going to get anything out of it? No, don't do nothing and listen. How do you decide whether you're going to go to school or not go to school? Well, sometimes I decide at night or when I get up before I go to school or on the way to school, I just decide not to go. Do you know what makes that decision for you? No. Sort of. I think it's because um, I know the day is going to be annoying for me. Everybody's going to start having a go at me, so I just don't bother going in. In a situation where he has to discuss any of his work, or maybe asked his feelings or his thoughts about things. He resolutely refuses to most of the time. I don't do these Why don't you want to do it? Because it's actually finding out about individual members know, of the tutor group. First time I've been through this. Right, well, he doesn't know you. He doesn't know does. you, and we're in the same... We're in the morning now. What time will you leave the school today? We're going out at 12. Why? Oh, it's so boring. 
got a lot of things. I've got a lot of things to do, and this place is just taking up my time. We're getting absolutely nothing from Patrick. He really is totally switched off from school. Patrick's parents have two other children. Both have truanted. Mr. Looney is blind. The law says it's your responsibility as parents to get your children into school. Yeah. Does it worry you when the social workers come around and tell you that? At the beginning it did, but they can only take me out and shoot me, can't they? And I don't think they'd want to do that. Because when, when it, what it boils down to is, all right, we're responsible for the child, but we can't be with that child 24 hours a day. The law of the land says you've got to go to school. But the law, it can't make you interested in school if you've got no interest in it. I mean... I just don't know... They can't send the policeman to every household and take the children to school. I mean... There must be what something child wants to go to school? There must be something wrong with the child if he wants to go to school. You know, I keep drumming it into him. Every day, more or less. But he's got to attend school. But whether it goes in or not, I don't know. I mean, I don't think school should be compulsory. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, it, it shouldn't be, love. I mean, if you don't want to go, you don't want to go. I mean, but I mean, what would you do with a child? I, I went to school and, you know, I could, they were teaching me to read. I know how to read already. The Year 11 project, which has accepted Patrick, works with the school children mainstream education can't cope with. They've all been excluded from mainstream education, sometimes for fighting, sometimes uh, for uh, abusive behaviour, uh, sometimes uh, because it just doesn't fit into the system. They suspended me over and over again. And I was in a fight with a girl at school. And they expelled me. That. Just from one school? Yeah. Why didn't you go to another school? There's no other school would have me. The project offers one to one support within a more relaxed setup. There's an emphasis on practical work, particularly art. We make them feel as if they are worth something make them feel that they can walk out this place and, um, and shout just as loud as anybody else. And that's what's important about the project. I'm trying hard not to get into trouble. Why do you think that is? Because this is my last opportunity. It's my last opportunity to learn anything. So I've got to take it. It's Patrick's last opportunity, but will he take it? It's called the Year 11 Project, and they offered you a place two days a week. How do you feel about that? It's fine, miss. It's all right. Good. Well, that's good to hear. OK. You've got to be cool about these things, you know. When you're six, 15, 16, it's, uh, um, it's quite a difficult situation to handle, handle. I mean, Patrick was being singled out, and it was quite difficult to him to show his pleasure, although I think he was very pleased. Patrick is not typical. The vast majority of pupils at Park High pass through causing few problems. The school seems at ease with itself and the relationship between most staff and pupils is good, if occasionally lively. I don't believe this, Mark. You are such a wally. No, not really, but that's a different matter, isn't it? I was speaking to him. I didn't say anything. I know you didn't, but you nearly did. You nearly did. You nearly did. You nearly did. He fancies you, miss. Oh, no, but you can't ignore it. He won't miss him. I'm not, I can't tolerate it, not in public, it's embarrassing. Too much of this and you're on your bike. And you know what happens then when we get back to school. Agreed? Come on, let's go. Wrap this round and stick it with a sellotape. Don't shake it, you clown. I'll put you in a tube and shake you. How would you like it? Well, you probably would, wouldn't you? Right. Hi there, how are you? The children at the centre of the English exam route left Park in the summer. They've come back tonight to collect their exam certificates. For some, the effects of the markdown will be critical. Daniel's change in grade took him from a pass to a fail. Well, I wasn't very happy because the teachers told me I was going to get a C. The college accepts five A to C grades to do three A levels. Because I only got the four, they wouldn't let me do three A levels. So I'm having to do two and a half and retaking my English. They're punishing the children because if they went down from a C to a D, many of those kids won't get onto the courses they wanted. Um, if I take one example, if they went down from a C to a D, they can't now be teachers because you need a grade C, G, C, S, E. Park High decides to spend £160 on an appeal and a remark. I want this to come across as a school that cannot understand 
a ridiculous situation. Of course. And wants an explanation. Fine, fine. Right. yeah. But will they succeed? I very much doubt whether they will change those grades. But you think they jolly well ought to. There's no question of that. Of course. But at the governor's meeting, the head is in more confident mood. The explanation that came through was unacceptable, and we have formally appealed, and the chief examiner is remarking our scripts. I really do trust that there will be some kind of outcome to that. We're not gods. Neither are the exam boards. Right, you might have heard through the grapevine that today we're moving on to puberty, adolescence. Remember... Jan Vickery is one of the teachers responsible for sex education at Park. And how long does it go on for? We've got that one extreme year. When does it actually finish puberty? <laughs> it's not an easy job. She can have a baby. It's true that if a little baby gets raped, that she needs puberty straight afterwards. No, I haven't heard. I haven't heard that one before, Daniel. <laughs> I know it causes a lot of um, discussion in staff rooms all over the country because whose role is it to discuss sex education, and talk about sex education, talk about sex? Is it the parents? Is it the teachers? Well, you must get your tubes right. The first time I taught sex education, I got my tubes in the wrong order. I was so close to the board, I did my labels wrong. And I zipped to the back of the class, and they were all drawing it out and everything. I was like, oh, no. You can imagine my whole class going away and obviously trying to penetrate when they eventually had sex, the wrong opening, which would be very painful. <laughs> I had the same problem trying to change oil in my car, because you have a dipstick, and I thought that's very... <laughs> That's very appropriate, isn't it? We don't know how many parents actually sit down with their children and explain the facts of life. And we don't know how many parents are talking about contraception, talking about AIDS. So therefore we feel it now has come back full circle, it's back on our shoulders again. Just see if you can actually name 1 to 16. 4, I think, is the blood on. 40. Right. Just sit a little bit down, Jesus. 3 is... Number one, the penis. Yes, you should have all got that. Number twelve is the scrotum. Number eight, the vaginal lips. Lips. Lips number nine. Cubic bone. Every year a nurse from Tampax talks to the first year girls about menstruation. For the first time at Park, it's been decided the boys should be there as well. I'm torn, I'm torn. If it's going to inhibit questions from the girls, yes, I won't be happy. But because it's an experiment, the first time we've done it, I will be very interested to see the reaction, how the girls react. They might just be sitting there, red-faced, the whole way through. Daniel. Why don't you give a, the boys this talk on masturbation? I don't think that would take up a whole lesson. No, but it'll take up two minutes. Some of the slides are quite funny. So if you must giggle, please giggle and then get it over and done with. Otherwise, we run behind time, and what happens is I cut it all down, and you don't get half the juicy bits that you should do. So there you go. <laughs> now, us ladies, we develop breasts as well. They're there, of course, to breastfeed babies. But we'd all look very stupid if we walked around with two pints of semi-skin milk strapped to our chest the entire time. <laughs> size does not matter with breasts. Makes no difference what size they are. It's quality that counts not quantity. <laughs> the girls act maturely. The boys, in some cases, do not. This is obviously one having a bit of a snooze. They produce sperm at the rate of about a thousand every single minute. I don't know about you ladies, but I've never seen any men wandering around with enormous testicles perched in a wheelbarrow and going, oh, look at that there today, darling. <laughs> The children react well. There's only one casualty. Oh, somebody, somebody in the back there is going to be poorly. You pop her head between her legs. Whoever's sitting next to her, don't panic. Right, listen to me. It is perfectly normal for some people, when we're talking about topics like this, to feel a little bit queasy and a little bit unwell. 
for him. It's perfectly normal. At the end of the lecture, there's a word from the sponsors. Well, this is a sanitary towel. It's really not very exciting. So, gentlemen, please, sometimes the boys think it's quite hilarious if these fall out on the floor to grab them and start chucking them about the place. <laughs> right? There's nothing funny about it because... If boys are going out with someone, they won't know what's going on if they're in the mood, the girl's in the mood. So it's quite good for them to learn something. In case they haven't got any sisters or mum or anything. I felt a bit strange with the boys being there. Felt different, sort of thing, talking about it when there were boys there as well. Were you embarrassed? No. Do you think some of the boys were embarrassed? Yeah. If you'd had a choice, would you have had boys there or not? No. I would have felt more comfortable if there weren't boys there, but I didn't feel uncomfortable. And Park Eye has decided to continue the experiment in the future. It's Patrick's first day at the Year 11 project, but there's no sign of him. And what time was Patrick meant to be here? Half past, half past nine. Um, what do you think? First day, traffic, bad weather, I don't know. I could come up with loads of excuses for him. We'll see, we'll see. I'm prepared to wait. I've got the whole day. Um, we've got a course, we've got uh, ideas, we've got something to offer him, and if he's not choosing to take it, that's his problem, not mine. Still no sign. He's got to come in, he's got to prove it himself. Uh, he could generally be ill, he could be trying to ring in now. Patrick's on the phone. They are. Thanks. Patrick! Hi, how are you doing? You lost. Despite being given detailed instructions of how to get to the project, Patrick has only made it a couple of hundred yards along the road from his home. The project picks him up and an hour late, he does finally make it. Year 11 is doing its best to entice him. Patrick wants to be a mechanic and there's a go-kart and a motorbike for him to work on. It's not easy, is it? He wants to learn the bass guitar, and there's a music teacher to help him. But the project and Park High want Patrick to get some qualifications, and as part of that aim, Patrick must still attend school two days a week. So if you decide that you're not going to be here for those two days, then I'm afraid we can't offer you the project. How do you feel about that? It's you can cope with that? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Do you think you really can manage to get into the school two days no, a week? I think I'll go two days a week. Whether I'll do lessons or not, one there is a different matter. One, 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 two, one, two, do you one. think that you will manage to get through the Year 11 project? Oh, yeah. He has to learn that life has its rules. There are parameters beyond which you cannot scale. And he has to learn that there are certain disciplines within school and without of school. If he gives up on that, well then, it's a hopeless case. He's just going to have to sort himself out. The results of the English exam appeal have arrived. Not one of the 80 markdowns has been reversed. I didn't really expect them to change it. But even so, when you see it in black and white, it's still a bit gobsmacked about it. And quite angry because it just sort of throws doubt on your professional expertise. Isn't it almost a slap in the face to say you're incompetent? Gosh, there's a... Hasn't somebody recently got about £50,000 for saying that they were boring? Is that the Coronation Street stuff? Yeah, that's right. 50000 he got for being boring, isn't it? Mm. Somebody saying here that I'm incompetent for English? The University of London Examinations and Assessment Council said in a statement that it believed Park High School's internal moderation procedures would have been more effective if the school had sent a representative to the agreement trial, but wishes to emphasise that the school's candidates were in no way penalised by the school's non-attendance at the agreement trial. There's no question to my mind that a number of those pupils, an injustice has been done. No question to my mind at all over that. Uh, Where have you been, Patrick? Where have I been? They're back again. Over the last couple of weeks, Patrick has hardly been seen at school. He's gone back on the deal that allowed him to attend the project. When they got you the place on the Year 11 project, part of the understanding was that you must come to school two days a week. Yeah. You've not been doing that, have you? No. 
Why? I just can't bother to. This place is sort of like, it's dead. This place is dead. They have more fun in the morgue or something. Uh, I left school at three months before I was 15. And, uh, you know, I, I, well, it's just a um, complete waste of time. I, I learned nothing at school. But if he carries on the way he's been carrying on, leaving school out, then it's going to be really hard for him because an employer doesn't want an, a person that's not going to turn up for work, do they? I am cross with him because one Patrick is, is of reasonable intelligence. He's not, uh, in inverted commas, special needs. He could cope quite well, but he has no intention of coping at all. You know, I mean, there's no compunction about playing the system. And I suppose I feel cheated, I think that's the word. I feel cheated by him. In January, Patrick was sent full-time on the Year 11 project. He rarely attended and left age 16 without any qualifications. He has been unemployed ever since. Well, most of the teachers try to help people all the time. It's that um, I just couldn't get into school and I don't, sort of didn't like teachers. So after time, I just ignored the teachers. Do you regret doing that now? Definitely. Six weeks ago, a year after the start of the English Markdown Row, this summer's GCSE results were announced. Not one of Park High's English grades was changed. Goodness me, is this the same boy? Your brains have addled over the summer holidays. Congratulations, folks, you're making yourself look proper idiots. Shut up, you. You're no oil painting. If you appear... Park High School is a mixed comprehensive in Harrow, educating almost a thousand children. Most physical bullies in school get caught. Most people who hit others, punch others, get caught because they leave marks or they make people cry or there's a fight and we hear about it and they get dealt with. Dominic Allen, would you like to explain what happened? Yes, Stephen Hook said that he said something about my mum and I don't know think people say things. And so you believe someone else's word and then, before you found out? And then Stephen said that he was joking after I hit him. After you hit him? You hit a boy in school? Yes, miss. What have I said time and time again about aggression? What if every single child who had an argument in this school resorted to physical behaviour? Park High is a successful, popular school with a good reputation. You know why, um, Trudy, I go, but I don't know why, because I, I haven't said nothing. And then, so, she, I just gave her a little slap <laughs> around the face. <laughs> Fine. So if I just give you a little slap around the face now, that'll be OK, will it? Head teacher Keith Ford is holding an assembly on bullying. The worst bullying by far comes with that horrible thing called the mouth. And let us face it, there isn't one of you sitting in this hall, teacher or pupil, who hasn't got something about which they're embarrassed or feel weak. This morning, he said, um, you can't pass me. He said to me, you stink. And then she just started to tell Ryan that like Kevin, I wanted to go out of Kevin and Kevin and I truly broke us two up. What did she say? Uh, if you can repeat it, I mean, we won't be shocked. That my mum was a whore. Park High is not a school that tries to pretend bullying doesn't go on. It happens here and they do their best to deal with it. Many of the incidents are minor, like this boy spraying another pupil with spit during a drama class. But some bullying is not so trivial. The children know, or should know, they don't always believe it, 
that if they're bullied, they can come to us and it can be dealt with without repercussions. What they're most scared of. I mean, if you say to some children, who are you more scared of, him or me? They actually honestly answer him, and they are. I mean, some of them out there can do more nasty things to them than I can. So it's convincing them they're safe. If they come to me, nothing will happen.